Hey guys, what's happening? I uh, got a great video for you today. It's kind of a training, so you definitely want to take notes. Uh, Chris and I just got off a three hour live stream with this amazing woman named Teal Swan. And we were talking all about manifesting money and some of the negative beliefs that stop us from not only being able to manifest money, but actually keep money and also be able to grow our business as well. So I have got um, a ton of notes that I took. I'm gonna share some of these notes with you guys because I know this will really help our community as well as like some of the experiences that I've been through because, um, well, I didn't have the best beliefs growing up, <laughs> especially not around money uh, and neither did Chris. So um, Teal said something that I wanna share with you guys that's really crazy. She said, I'm just gonna read this. If you were raised in a family who has negative beliefs about money, you will have negative beliefs about money until you change it. And that's what this video is about. So if you're a business owner, you're a network marketer, you're a small business owner, but you're sort of struggling and you have some sort of negative belief or lack around money or being able to earn it or you know sustain it, uh, being able to attract it, and this is the perfect video for you. So we're gonna dive into some of these aspects on this training and really uh, dig through some of the core blocks that you're facing. And I know because I coach many of you or a lot of you in our community reach out to me. So I know this will help you in a big, big, big way. Let me show you something real cool. It's a little, little side topic. Check this out. Let me focus in on you for here. See if we can zoom in on that. You, see, you guys see that? So this is a pyrite calcite rock. It's a mineral. It's actually called fool's gold. Apparently it's supposed to embrace your masculine energy, which is like your purpose and your drive and your mission. So Chris got me this for Christmas. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, if you guys can kind of see that. It's kind of a mixture of both. Anyways, it's supposed to be good for manifesting and clearing negative energy. So, there you go. All right, let's jump into it. So. The reason I wanted to shoot this video for you is because there's a reoccurring theme that I'm finding from many of you in our community, as well as any of you that are networkers, is that you have this amazing business or idea of a business that you want to create, but then there's all these like blocks, right, that are stopping you. It's like, here's the, <laughs> this is kind of perfect actually, here's the gold at the top of the mountain, right, and here's where you are, and you're like, how do I get the gold at the top of the mountain and to be able to achieve what I want in life and business? So, this is a common thing I've noticed among entrepreneurs, is that over the last several years, um, I've been really fortunate to help a ton of people, hundreds of people, and you know, also talk to hundreds of people. And one of the questions I typically ask people is, were your parents entrepreneurial? And 90% of the time, it's like, no, they weren't. And what's really interesting about that is you go out and start a business. You're like, F it, I'm gonna go be an entrepreneur. I'm gonna be a networker. I'm gonna create freedom. Because ultimately, what is money? It's a tool, right? So money is not good or bad. Money is not the root of all evil, and more money does not equal happiness. Money is a tool. And it's a tool to give you what? Freedom, right? Time freedom to do the things that you love most in your life. So Teal gave a, a really great example that I want you guys to totally hear me on this. She said money is a tool no different than a wrench or a hammer. Those are tools to help do a job that you're gonna do. That's what money is. You can do a lot of great things with money. You can do a lot of bad things with money too, depending on how you use it. But either way, that's all money is. Money is just a tool. So she said something really, really cool, guys. She said, Money starts in the mind. Money starts in the mind. So meaning that, and, and I understood this from Marianne Williamson, money in itself is a material thing, but the source of money is a spiritual source. So that means in order to change the amount of money that we attract and keep, it has to come from our what? Thinking. Money starts in the mind. Here's the challenge that you're facing, that I'm facing and I've faced uh, many, many years of personal growth and spiritual development, Chris as well, is that you start a business, but if your parents were not entrepreneurial, they're not going to think the same way that you're thinking, right? It's going to contradict. And probably many of you, from what I've heard, um, your parents don't even fully support you with the businesses that you're doing. They don't, maybe they 
kind of acknowledge what you're doing, but they aren't invested into it. They're not like rooting you on like your, your greatest cheerleader, right? <laughs> Which is okay. But here's, here's a really interesting thing to understand is that most of you have told me that your parents have a negative association with money or they're always, they were always stressed out when you were growing up or there wasn't enough money. They're always fighting about it and they didn't want to wake up in the morning to go to a job because they hated going to that job, but they did it for their entire life. Here's the fucked up thing is you start a business. You're like, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to create time freedom for me and my family. But your parents were not entrepreneurial. Their parents, your great grandparents were not entrepreneurial. Their parents, your great great grandparents were not entrepreneurial. And then you keep going up the lineage, right? So not only are you dealing with your beliefs, and limiting beliefs, negative beliefs around money and lack, but now you're also dealing with generations going decades and decades and centuries up of your whole lineage being passed down to you through DNA. You follow me on that? Right? So then I have people that come to me and they're like, right, how do I get over this fear of this or this fear of that? Well, not only are you dealing with the things that you've been imprint imprinted in from your environment growing up under the age of eight, but you're also dealing with your DNA imprint from your lineage of ancestry. Crazy, right? So be gentle on yourself <laughs> because it's not just you, right? You're dealing with your parents' shit, their parents' shit that they didn't deal with in their life. You're dealing with their suppressed stuff as well. So my coach always tells me, not only do we have to grieve for our own shit, but we also have to grieve for our parents, our great grandparents, their stuff as well to start to clean it up. So here's the good news. My magic rock, it tells me that you can clean this up, which I know we can. Um, I'm living proof that this is possible. I did not grow up in an affluent family where money was just abundant and we could just buy whatever we want. I remember not getting toys I wanted. I remember my parents fighting about money all the time. I grew up with two older sisters with three kids. Money was a tight thing. My parents were entrep uh, entrepreneurs. I grew up when they were starting an Amway business and then they built it to six figures by the time I was a teenager, but it was a struggle. And so I did not grow up in an affluent family like many of you. So in order for me to rewrite my belief systems to be able to grow my own business and make my own money, I had to change the person I am, who, who I was from my environment, but also start to break the cycle of my lineage. So you can do the same thing. Chris is in a very uh, similar environment, right? So it's just really, it's really, really fascinating. So I want to give you some like huge takeaways through this video that you can just sort of like aha moments because I'm telling you right now, it's not your parents' fault. It's not, it's not anyone's fault, right? Wherever you're at in life is exactly where you need to be because there's lessons that you need to learn for your evolution and growth before you can go to the next phase. So whatever you're going through right now, financially, monetarily, and where you want to be, there's lessons that you need to learn to progress. There's things that you need to heal that are suppressed, right? So <clears throat> here's an interesting idea that I want you guys to, to take away. This is from Teal, so I can't take credit for this. She said, I want you, okay, so we'll play, we'll, we'll, we'll role play with this. So I want you to think of the first things that comes to mind when I say this word, the very first thing, ready? Money. First thing, what was it? When I say the word money, what was the first thing that came to your mind? It's going to be different, right? So it might be amazing, positive, joy, abundant, excitement. It might be fear, negativity, anger, frustration. What's the first thing? That's how you can tell you have a negative belief or positive belief with money. Again, money is a tool. It doesn't mean anything. It's not the root of all evil. It doesn't lead to happiness. It's just a tool. It's a thing. It's, a, it's an ability to exchange energy. However, if you have a block, a money block, linked to your story, probably 80 to 90% of the people watching this video, it's a negative block. It's a negative association with money. That's why it's hard to what? Move forward. To create the what that you're looking for? Freedom. You want the time freedom from your business, right? So let me give you guys some other stuff here. I can dig through and find something good here. Ah, I love this. So she talked about that <clears throat> most of us, what we want to do is, is 
most of us, and I can tell you this from coaching people, is we are so fucking scared to go into our shit. We are so scared to go into the things, our insecurities, our fears, our depression, our negativity. We are so scared to go there. Why? Because it's painful. It's painful. So what do we do to avoid that pain? We go out there and we take more action. We read more personal development books. We attend seminars. We try to be positive. We had a, an attitude of gratitude. We do all these things to try and ignore all those suppressed emotions. And what I can tell you from my coaching clients is that the more you're willing to look at all of the parts you don't like about yourselves, the more your money blocks will heal. Okay, clearly we're doing something right because my camera just overheated and totally shut down on me. So we were talking about you know going into your shit, your emotional blocks. Um, she said something that, that I wanna share with you guys right now here and uh, it was really interesting if I can find it. Um, oh, the common traits of people who make money is they get out of their way emotionally. And what she means by this, and this is exactly what I've done to create um, the success that I have within coaching and network marketing, is they start to question everything. So you may be at this point. We question our belief system. We question our habits. We question our deserving levels. We question um, you know, how we were raised uh, from parenting. We question everything, right? And once you start to question those things, you start to take a look at sort of like the darker parts of yourselves, we call it the dark shadow. You start to let, start to take a look at the parts of yourself, the belief systems that aren't serving you. And I will tell you, that's the block with the money that you're facing. Money, it has nothing to do with money. Like I really hope you're hearing me on this. The block that you have of making and keeping money has nothing to do with money. And it has everything to do with suppressed emotions that are unhealed that you're not dealing with that you're ignoring, that you're getting rid of. It was so crazy when I started this process um, about this self-discovery journey about myself, you move out of a space from needing and wanting money and you move into a space of serving and helping other people start to, under, uh, start to understand how they can tap into their greatness and their light and their brilliance. So the money itself becomes just a byproduct of what you do. It doesn't matter what business you own. It works really, really well. So here's, here's what happened to me is because I grew up in an environment with my parents that had the belief, like especially my dad, that you have to work fucking hard for your money. Hard. You got you to gotta hustle. You got to drive. And it's all about persistence. And if you think of the analogy, be, do, have, it's staying in the space of do. Do, 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 do. Do more, do more, do more. Don't stop. Don't think. Just do more, do more, do more. Whereas I had to learn, and that's a very masculine energy, right? Conquering, moving forward, achieving, like, yeah, F yeah, I did it, right? That's a very masculine space of energy, which serves us. But then the being is a very feminine space of energy. It's calm, it's in flow with the universe, it's more heartfelt. So I've learned to balance both, my masculine and my feminine, where I grew up in a very masculine energy which I am very masculine by nature, hence the masculine rock. <laughs> so I am very masculine by nature, but I've had to learn to balance this, right? So what did I have to do? In order for me to balance this and to get into flow with how the universe works to attract money and attract opportunities to help people that equates to money, is I learned to have to look at every part of myself, and I'm still going through this, that I fucking hate. In fact, I started going through this process of spiritual growth that I went to my father and I, and my mother and my two sisters. And I said to them, what, what are the three qualities that you don't like about me the most? What are the three qualities that you don't like about me the most? And they, the, you're late, you're, you're not punctual, you're wishy-washy, you're whatever. It was all this stuff, right? You know, you know how hard that was? To go to people that you love and be like, what don't you like about me? So I did the same thing for what they like about me, right? But this is what I'm telling you, is money is never the problem. It's an unhealed belief. And the more I started to heal those beliefs, the more I started to integrate a lot of those suppressed emotions, the more I was able to do what? Love. Love myself and love other people. That's the secret. Which leads me into, and you're gonna love this, 
one of the biggest challenges that Chris had. Chris has what we call the archetype, uh, archetype my girlfriend, the damsel in distress. And so <clears throat> this is a great analogy. We were talking to our coach and she said, she said, Ryan, what would you tell your coaching clients if there is, and I'll, and I, I just so happen to have this, I didn't mean to do this, but what would you tell your coaching clients if there was a piece of gold up here on the top of the mountain and you're down at the base and you said, go, you know, you gotta go get that gold. And I'd be like, well, you gotta embrace everything, go make it happen, let's go do it, right? And so she says this to Chris and Chris says, oh, well, I know what I would do. She's like, I would sit at the bottom of the base down here and I would stare up at the gold with a Starbucks coffee in my hand and I would wait for someone to come up and grab that gold and bring it down to me, right? So that's the damsel in distress. It's someone who's just like waiting for them to come and help them. So that archetype is really fascinating when it comes to money because one of the challenges that Chris had, Chris has is taking enough action to be able to actually create the income that she wants in her life. So one of the things that uh, she says is that <clears throat> if we lack money and we go to other sources either for money or we go to other sources for emotional or spiritual help, it's because that is our way of receiving love. So one of the challenges that Chris had to overcome and is still overcoming is that if she goes out and becomes a multi, multi-millionaire, super duper successful, she won't need the emotional support and help from her parents. And so she will literally deflect money because of that fear of not receiving the love of being a damsel in distress or a victim. So she's learning to go through that process of healing that and embracing, you know, her risk taking and her action and her discipline and willpower and whatnot. So you guys follow me on this? So what I'm saying is really simple. Everything that you want out of your business and out of your life and to create the money you want to create has nothing to do with money and has everything to do with you looking into the parts of yourself you don't like and learning to embrace them and learning to love them. And I get it, that's scary shit. And yes, you are gonna need someone to walk you through that, like me, that's gonna help you get the results you want or whoever you resonate with. But this is what I'll tell you. Once you start this journey, it will open up this whole new world for you that is filled with amazing things. And your entire story that was passed down through your entire lineage down to where you're at today will start to change. So this is a process that you really have to start to question every single thing in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me grab a drink of water. And that's it. I mean, there is no, I'm not gonna give you like a five step formula, right? You really gotta start to go in and start to think about, wow, what is my belief with money? What did I see growing up? And sometimes we can remember a very specific moment of when something happened growing up under the age of seven. And other times it's just a feeling, it's an emotion. We, we can't even link exactly what happened. I'm getting super excited about this. So this is your homework. This is what I want you to do. Down in the comment section below, I want you to share with what was the relationship with money that you had growing up from what you saw with your parents? Was it, was it negative? Was it an argument? Was it a fight? Was it a struggle? What was the relationship? Get that out on the table so we can start to become clear with that and stop suppressing those things and bring them to the surface so they can be healed. So I want you to comment down below in the comment section. Just let me know because this will give me a better understanding on the content I need to put out for you to give you more specific content that's gonna help you move forward or the coaching that you're gonna need. So right down below in the Facebook section, section, sec, section, <laughs> right down below in the Facebook section and uh, drop me a line and let me know. And if you enjoyed this blog post, this video, make sure to hit the Facebook share button and the like button and let's get this out to the world, guys. Uh, let's keep rocking. I love you guys. Have an amazing rest of your day and we'll see you guys next Monday. Peace out.